Hey everybody, my name is Brandon from thestocksoons.com and today I want to talk about the three stocks that I'm watching this week. Those three stocks are Alibaba stock, ticker symbol BAPA, Xping stock, ticker symbol XPEV, and finally Qualcomm stock, ticker symbol QCOM. So now let's get started. So let's first start off by talking about Alibaba, the Chinese e-commerce company. We see here in the trading charts that Alibaba is really at a long-term support level around the $225 and $230 level here. If we look, this support level was made by these candles over here, this top candle over here, and the tops of these candles over here back in January and February of 2020. So because we are at such a long-term support level for the stock, I'm watching BABA this week to see if the stock breaks this level. If we break this level, if we zoom in here, then we could be going to the bottoms of these candles over here in the 210s to the 215s. If we break this level and we do go down to the 210s and 215s, then I would be ready to pick up some shares because I like the company. The reason why I like Alibaba as a long-term play is because of the fundamentals of the business. For me, the fundamentals of Alibaba are quite strong and I expect China to be the place for economic growth in the next few years. If we look over at Alibaba's earnings report here, we see that the total revenues here are increasing by 37% year over year and that is an incredible growth rate for any company but especially for one as large as Alibaba. We see that even when we're increasing revenues by 37%, if we look at the operating margins here, we are actually pretty flat on operating margins around the 22% level. What that's telling me is that because Alibaba is able to scale up revenues by 37% year over year, but we're only dropping about 3% in operating margins, what that's telling me is that Alibaba is an incredibly efficient business. And that is something I like to see as an investor. Again, macro picture here, the total addressable market for this business is ginormous. As an investor, I want to see businesses with large total addressable markets because those are all the people you can sell your products to. Because Alibaba has a large total addressable market, that is another reason why I like Alibaba. Unfortunately, of course, there are risks with Alibaba and it is why Alibaba's PE is only about 25 while their competitors like Amazon has a PE of about 72. Alibaba has international risks as well as regulatory risks within China. There has been talk about delisting of Chinese companies in the United States and that has been scaring investors into selling certain Chinese tech stocks. Firstly, the proposed time frame for delisting of the companies is years and is not days. So because of that, I don't think that this is an immediate threat to companies. Secondly, this would likely be affecting companies with more questionable accounting practices or companies that are more influenced by governments. Firstly, it's kind of hard to comment on the magnitude of government influence on Alibaba or the amount of questionable accounting practices because you know those are kind of hard to find data for. These are things that you have to come to your own conclusions on if you want to be an investor in Alibaba. For me, like I said, I'm sure there is some government influence in the business, but I don't think that a company like Alibaba would have as much questionable accounting practices as some of the other smaller and lesser known companies. Again, no proof to back up my statement at all, and that's just my opinion. But if a company as large as Alibaba was having accounting issues, I'm sure a whistleblower would have already blown the whistle and made a lot of money. These international risks, along with the Chinese regulator crackdown on their own big tech, are real risks that you have to consider. So after talking about the potential upside and downside risks for Alibaba, let's head on over to Xpeng, another stock that I'm gonna be watching closely this week. So here we are in Xpeng's trading charts and we can see that Xpeng is again really close to this key 27 to 30 support level here. I'm watching this closely this week to see if Xpeng will break this level or not. The reason for this is because I'm already in NEO, the other Chinese EV company. And because all the Chinese EV companies are pretty well correlated with each other, I don't really have to jump into Xpeng at any price. And I can be more selective and a little bit more greedy. Because I already have my NEO play, I would only want to expand my Chinese EV part of my portfolio if there is minimal downside risk but maximal upside risk. Because there's not really a lot of candles between where we broke out of from the low 20s, that tells me that there is really not a lot of support for this 27 to 30 dollar level if we break this level. So if we break this level, then I think we could find ourselves to the mid to lower 20s. 
If that is the case, then I would be really happy to start a position down here and wait for the long term. Again, the reason why I'm thinking about XPeng is because of the fundamentals and the macro picture. Even though I think NIO has the best fundamentals out of the three Chinese EV makers, XPeng has definitely shown good growth and I would definitely not mind putting some money into XPeng if we are down in the mid to lower 20s. So if we look at the fundamentals of XPeng here, we can see that XPeng is really growing fantastically in total revenues here year over year and even quarter over quarter with this being the most recent quarter. Like quarter over quarter, this is a 43% increase quarter over quarter. So if we look at the costs of revenues here, we see that quarter over quarter, we are only increasing costs by 39%. So because we're increasing revenues by 43% and we're only increasing costs by 39%, that means that we're able to capture more of this revenues here. And that's definitely a good sign and something I like to see as an investor. If we look down at the net loss here, we also see that we are decreasing our net loss by about 30% quarter over quarter. This slowing of the net loss is what I like to see, but we are still losing 120 million United States dollars in the quarter. Again, not the worst thing in the world. A lot of companies are willing to operate at a loss if there is a fantastic growth rate, which XPeng's growth rate is. But you have to be aware that XPeng's valuation only makes sense if its growth rate continues at its good pace. The downside risk is that XPeng stops growing at this rate. You also have to consider competition with XPeng. I mentioned before that I like Neo. Even though XPeng and Neo are going after different customers, while XPeng is more towards the middle to lower end, there is still competition from other EV makers. You have to consider competition as well as international relations risks like you have to with Alibaba. Again, I personally like Neo more, but at some point the stock is too cheap to ignore. And if we go down to the mid to lower 20s, then I would probably be getting ready to open up a position. So after talking about XPeng, now let's head on over to Qualcomm, the last company that I'm watching closely this week. So the last company that I'm watching closely this week, and is a company that I actually really like, is Qualcomm. If we look at the trading charts here, we can see that we are again at a support and resistance level around the $130 level, made from the tops of these candles over here and the tops of these candles over here. The reason why I'm watching Qualcomm closely this week is because I believe in the stock long term. We are in a macro environment semiconductor chip shortage at the moment and Qualcomm will definitely be a beneficiary for that. I actually think Qualcomm was one of the first companies that rang the bell on the shortage before anybody noticed and people attributed that to being the company's fault instead of the macro picture. However, now that we know that it wasn't necessarily the company's fault, it was actually happening across the whole industry. So if we cross again into the 120s, like these candles did over here, then I would probably be getting ready to pick up some more shares of Qualcomm again because I like the fundamentals of the business. So if we look at the most recent earnings report here, I am seeing fantastic growth in total revenues year over year with this being the most recent quarter ending on December 27th, 2020. So if we look down at the expenses here, we see that yes, we are growing expenses year over year, but that is a smaller percentage than the growth that we are seeing in the revenues here. So again, because we are growing revenues more than we are growing costs, then we are able to capture more of this revenues up here. And when we're capturing more of this revenues here, we can see that the net income is growing quite nicely year over year. And that's a really good thing because that means that we're having more money to play with and to invest in the business. Also, as an investor, check out the earnings per share, either diluted or basic. We see that we're growing earnings per share fantastically year over year. So another thing I like about Qualcomm is valuation. Compared to other chip makers like Nvidia or AMD, Qualcomm is around a 20 to price to earnings ratio, while AMD is around a 37 and Nvidia is around a 74. Because Qualcomm's PE is much lower than its peers, that could indicate that Qualcomm is trading at a discount. And I can't really find any good reason to justify the discount. So that was my review on those three stocks. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section down below. If you have any questions or if you caught any mistakes, also drop me a comment down below. If you like the video, please like the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.